Now this is the Ram Kangaroo. It's a Canadian tank, but it's on an American chassis, which you'll recognize at once. In fact, they chose the chassis of the M3 medium, what we know as the Grant, and um, built their tank on top of that. It's of cast construction, as you can see, so it's all rounded. But as a kangaroo, which is the term they use for them, it's a troop carrier. That's why it's had the turret removed. Um, the troop carrier could take eight men, and the idea was that a troop of these things, that's three of them, could take a, a troop of the, um, the soldiers and so on up the scale until you got to the squadron, which would take a battalion of men and their headquarters all in together. So that's how they, they arranged the, um, the kangaroo to carry that many people, or, or at least to, to get them into action. And the idea was to make them, or drive them into action. They didn't have to walk or march, and they were protected as they would be inside a tank. The only real trouble was that the only way of getting in is over the top. And when you think, I know these guys were a lot younger than we are today, or at least than I am, but they were usually, it was usually winter, they were normally wearing great coats, they were carrying a rifle and, the, and ditching tools, their spade and that kind of thing, and yet they had to shin over the top into this vehicle and also get out. And they did, they didn't always do it, but you do find pictures of them leaping out. And that isn't a very good idea. You hit the ground too hard and the jarring motion will catch up with you later on in life. So that's why it was done anyway. But it looks good for the moment, the fellas leaping out over the top. And uh, this was the original armoured personnel carrier. The Canadians had tried to make a kangaroo out of the, uh, a self-propelled gun, an M7 Priest self-propelled gun. They did it by removing the gun, building up the armour around the sides to protect the men and putting them into the field instead. Now that was their first attempt at making a kangaroo. Later on they decided that the ram, which was available in quite large numbers, although it wasn't used in action at all in any other respect, was the ideal vehicle and that's what we've got here. It has a crew of two, you have a driver sitting right front who's got the normal controls for a track vehicle and to his left the turret with a 30 calibre Browning in. Now this is another little oddity in that we've recently discovered that these particular kangaroos, that is those with the turrets, were used by 49th Carrier Regiment, which was a British armoured regiment, created actually from 49th Royal Tank Regiment, and that the Canadian carriers, which served with the Canadian Armoured Personnel Carrier Company, um, were of a later pattern with a, a hull machine gun on the other side. And there was a distinction. So if you see one of these in a photograph, if it's got the turret, it should be a British vehicle, and if not, a Canadian one. And that's quite remarkable, actually, that they had that much organisation. Both of these units were parts of 79th Armoured Division. They were only used from the autumn of 1944 through to the end of the war, but they were invaluable. They meant that infantry could approach they could keep up with a track vehicle. At least they used to say with these things, they could go anywhere a Sherman could go, but they weren't actually quite so good at following Churchill's. The Churchill had a knack of climbing, which put everything else in the shade, and the poor old kangaroo couldn't always follow. So that was one condition they had, though later on there was a Churchill kangaroo to try and keep up with the Churchill's. That's how they worked anyway. Um, otherwise, it's a basic, Canadian tank, though it's got the nine-cylinder radial, the continental radial in the back, it's an air-cooled engine, and the drawback with that is you have the drive shaft running right through the floor of the, um, the crew compartment, so that those eight men who had nowhere really to sit, they had to stand at their work and lean on the side, um, had to make sure they didn't uh, foul this shaft that was spinning round all the time. And that made it a little bit difficult for them in there. The tank also has a radio set, which is on one of the, on the shelf under the side at the back. And that was only used for um, intercommunication with other tanks. But the regiment was specifically organised to carry infantry, which is why they 
had them arranged like they had. And uh, for that reason, it was probably larger than an ordinary regiment of tanks and quite an unusual arrangement at the best of times. Um, we've got, you'll see, drive sprocket at the front. That's typical of American tanks and very typical, of course, of the M3. It has the earlier M3 type suspension, which you won't find on any other vehicle. By the time the Sherman comes out, they've normally got the trailing return roller for a slight difference but it's basically the same as the, the Lee underneath, all hidden away under the Canadian armour. In fact, you can see a lot of British influence in the design, including that sub-turret at the front, which has been put in there to, um, just to give the thing a bit of built-in defence of its own right, really. It's quite useful, but it's quite an odd arrangement with the turret stuck on the side like that. But that's the ram kangaroo. When you first see it, you know, a tank without a turret, it looks like nothing at all, really. But once you realise what it is and why it's done like it is, it becomes very interesting and you need to have a good close look at it when you're in the museum. It does show how it works. We actually tugged this thing off a range. It was a wreck and it's got a few scratches and bullet marks on it. But it's been done up and it doesn't look bad at all. And it's got all the markings on for 49th, carrier regiment to uh, make it authentic but um, in that respect it goes quite a long way towards showing another use for tanks which is what this whole funnies project is all about really.